Welcome to The Visible Artist. My name is Sophie Loxton Lucas, and I'm delighted to bring you this episode from the Brixton studio of artist Zanny Mella. I have known Zanny for many years and have followed her artistic progression with great interest. Her work is constantly evolving and responding to her environment, whether she is working on an intimate scale at the kitchen table during lockdown or donning her hiking boots to photograph the vast Patagonian landscape. Zanny soaks up her surroundings and then reflects them back into her work. With a portfolio spanning abstract painting, photography, collage and installation, Zanny varies her approach to creating work, sometimes using energetic gestural movements, sometimes enjoying a slower process of building up layers. Just as she enjoys experimentation in her practice, Zanny is adventurous when it comes to creating her own opportunities. We discuss her experience of co-curating The Breath Project, an exhibition of 20 international contemporary artists, her journey from an illustration degree to commercial work and then back to a master's in fine art, and explore her involvement with the platform Glassette and how she feels about placing her work in the world of interiors. I do hope you enjoy this episode. Zanny, thank you so much for having me in your studio. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's so lovely to sit here and see all of your work on the wall. I can see quite a few different pieces from different series, really see where you're moving in your practice at the moment. Yeah, it's it's great to have a lot of works out because I always find I work in series and it's important to be able to kind of refer to the works as you're working on new ones. But yeah, it's kind of I'm moving into a slightly new territory at the moment, so mm. it's good to make sense of all, all in the wall. Can you tell me a bit about your work, maybe your current work, and how you would describe that to someone? Well, the, the newer work that I've been producing in the last couple of years is very abstract, working across both painting on paper, on board, and paper collage, and... There's a lot of energy, a lot of colour, very dynamic shapes that often refer to painterly gestures. And I'm taking the kind of colours both from nature, but also more recently from sort of more interior settings. And yeah, there's a lot of energy. It's, um, they're quite they're exciting to look at. Mm, they're certainly very dynamic and and in some ways quite different from the work that you were doing before. Could you describe that work? Yeah, well, um, before the pandemic, my painting um, and some sort of installations and some of the photograms I was producing in the darkroom have a much more minimal s- sort of aesthetic. We're more focusing on the process and materials. I was using light as a medium and a lot of the a lot of the kind of references for those were particular landscapes, particular natural processes. I kind of grew up in the countryside and have always been attracted to wild wild environments. I've kind of um travelled through Iceland and Patagonia and places like that. And so the work was kind of paired back to monochromes, subtle light kind of peach tones which again came about through this kind of early morning light fusing photography with painting and it was quite quite paired back but still with kind of dynamic movement and shapes yes and when I think about those pieces I've seen some of them in person and some of them on your website it looks as though some are the product of maybe quite an energetic dynamic gesture in one big movement and then some are more layered and has taken Mm. more time so you sort of Mm. have these two approaches would Mm. you say that's correct yeah absolutely I've always found that tension to be quite interesting because a a lot of painting well actually the painting is both fast and slow and I think how I've been exploring it until more recently has been looking at natural processes the kind of speed of a waterfall combined with let's say the layering of sedimentary processes in a lake or a valley or that's kind of what I started exploring was that that speed and and then the opposite of speed (laughs) the gentle kind of subtle layering and I think the gesture came into my practice 
when I went back to study and did a master's at City and Guilds. And that was kind of both scary and interesting Mm -hmm. because I hadn't been making works that were gestural before, that were particularly authored, if that's Mm -hmm. the right word. (laughs) Um, It's a good word. (laughs) Yeah. And it was this kind of combination of you as the painter and your language mixed with these kind of references that may may have been sort of... um, further away so I started combining those sort of speeds of perhaps the perceived slowness of memory of certain places that you've traveled to and the energetic gesture of now your vital gesture it's interesting you say that because when I was researching for the podcast and thinking about your work I was in some ways finding it a challenge to write about it in a good way certain phrases like gestural is often used in lots of, you know, for lots of artists. Mm. Whereas I feel as though there's more to you just putting the paint on the canvas. It's linked, as you say, to these places you've been to or thinking about time and light and space. There's just a lot more behind it than you just aesthetically adding some strokes to a canvas. So it sounds as though your master's was quite a turning point for your artistic journey. Yeah, definitely. I just actually traveled to Patagonia and Iceland kind of quite quickly in that period before so it had been quite a shake up in terms of moving from my earlier work was kind of very much getting a sense of urban spaces trying to kind of make sense of that kind of energy Mm. into exploring which I always thought I would, more natural environments and natural processes. I grew up in the countryside, and so that's always been something that's been of interest to me. So there was definitely a shift in speed and material. I kind of travelled for a few months through Patagonia, and prior to that I had been drawing and painting so intensively on a number of private commissions. And what I really needed to do was have a break from drawing, because I... I was quite, I was kind of a bit burnt out, I suppose. When you say private commissions, what sort of drawing were you doing? Well, the earlier work was essentially creating portrait of a place. Mm. So I would go and do a lot of site-specific drawing, capture the architecture, the energy, the traffic moving, the pigeons, and then I'd overla- overlay that with architectural drawing, with the maps of a particular area. So again, they were very energetic Mm. paintings, but um, they were very meticulous. And so the trip to South America, I put down my sketchbook and I just took a camera and Mm. I wrote. And that started to bring the process of seeing, the process of painting and photography into, yeah, into the practice. These trips to Patagonia, Iceland, how did you bring that back into your work when you came back to your studio? What did you have as a record of your trip? Was it in your memory or was it, you say, photographs? Like, yeah. What were they and how did you translate that into your work? Well, it was interesting because that and initially after that first large trip, um, I started playing with paint in a way that, that really focused on the process the, the speed of flow of liquid paint mm. across a canvas that might have been akin to how water moved through a valley. And so it either became very, very present, very working with this liquid medium. You're really focused on, on how, how to affect the flow. Or I was referring to the imagery that I'd taken so it became either highly abstract and process or very representational Mm. and then starting the the masters was a really good way to sort of sift through what that meant because I'd stirred up loads of different areas of my practice Mm. and I studied illustration years ago kind of when I was an undergrad so that element of drawing and representation was always there but always fused with an interest in abstraction. And when you look back since your master's, are there any particular works that stand out in your mind and thinking these would be nice pieces to 
link back to in the podcast show notes or on mm. the Instagram page. I'd love to show some key pieces of your work. So are there any particular particular works? That stand yeah, out? yeah. Well, generally, I, I I do work in series. Or there's, you know, there's definitely relationships between each painting. One specific big painting that I did during my masters was quite an interesting kind of bouncing bouncing off point mm -hmm. which was uh, this is just a postcard of it yes. on my <laughs> on my studio wall but um this one is exposed and that was I guess as I started to work bigger and really use my body in the kind of painting process that was a really um interesting time because the painting process became very physical and it was perhaps akin to kind of being in I don't know kind of being in the landscape using your body to mm. to travel um but it also had a relationship to some of the um photograms that I started making in the darkroom and so there was this cross pollination between the language of painting and photography and expose that painting was the act of removal showed the layer of aluminium underneath and that aluminium silvery quality was what I wanted to kind of link to the photographic processes mm -hmm. as well and and also the photograms I was making alongside and they were a really exciting kind of push into a new new medium for me mm -hmm. and the, the process of making them is as an amazing transformation you're yeah and it's all very based on chance which I think was a huge pop, kind of huge part of how the artwork developed was this kind of being open to to paint controlling you rather than you controlling the paint mm -hmm. and being happy with the the slippage of of the work and not not being in control of every element I think I found that really exciting in the painting process mm -hmm. and in the photogram process in the darkroom it looks as though you've done quite a lot of collaborations that you're quite ex interested in experimenting with your practice and collaborating with other artists to push those uh, directions can you tell me about one of those collaborations I definitely realized a few years ago that for me being in the studio five days a week on my own was just just a bit too a bit too intense mm -hmm. um and I am a communicator whether that's visual through the artworks or through other kind of jobs that I've had which have often been in kind of um design and communications as well I need to work with people and there's a kind of there's an energy and an excitement that I get through collaborating and making something happen that is neither yours or neither theirs it's yeah. it's something that's maybe other <laughs> yes <laughs> and so one particular collaboration I did a few years ago which which was great was um it was called the shape of light it was through the London alternative photography collective I worked with another artist called Jessica Rayner on um a collaborative site-specific installation and I discovered her work um and approached her on Instagram as you do <laughs> and um she was working kind of cross-pollinating photography and different kinds of image making with a painterly background mm. but I just knew that there would be a kind of exciting energy between our our work at that time and our use of light and process we made this essentially a kind of really immersive light installation that was a, 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 you're walking through a crypt down a dark tunnel with these layers of light kind of coming towards you and it was only on for one night so uh so everyone if you didn't experience it on that night <laughs> you, you missed it and there was something quite exciting about that as well in the, the 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 time frame that it could be viewed in was yeah. so short but i loved i loved working with her on that because it was it was a really interesting way of working as an artist where you're you're working together and you're working things out and you're solving problems and you're you're kind of discovering 
what it is you're producing as you're producing it. And we treated it as a kind of research residency, as a way of just breaking out from our practices. It must have been quite an experience working with an artist that you didn't know. You, so you just found her and you liked her work and then that's yeah. where it all started. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we kind of, we got in touch and there was an obvious, obviously a, a really clear link between mm. what we were interested in. I can't even remember now. I think I pitched to her like an idea and she was up for it. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's amazing. I love the fact that it came from the work because I imagine most of the time artists collaborate, they know each other and yeah. they have a good working relationship perhaps, but this could have gone in all sorts of directions. You don't know what she was like, but I think that's great. I've definitely discovered that through the kind of gestural painting as well and the idea of chance coming mm. into the, the process of making with fluid work. And I, I think the idea of chance and risk and trying stuff out is mm. really exciting to me and how you should approach a creative practice mm. you know you should be willing to like step out of your comfort zone and try stuff that isn't new so you're constantly learning yes you're working with other artists and inspired by others and you've actually co-curated your own shows with other artists so could you tell me a bit about that last year I've worked with Hannah Payne, who is a curator, and she's the founder of The Art Five, where she interviews um, a number of different artists for her website. And The Breath Project, as, as it's come to be called, was something that very much came out of lockdown one and as the pandemic started. And I think I've just started describing it as a empathetic response to what was happening and I started producing drawings and paintings that looked at the idea of breath the idea of covid the graphic structure of the rib cage the diaphragm the sense of breath moving in and out of someone's body and I as I'm sure a lot of people did at the time felt a little bit helpless that that we're all kind of at home seeing this unfold. And so I knew that I wanted to do some kind of art initiative that would help to raise money for frontline workers. And I, again, sort of pitched the idea to Hannah and we developed it together. And we hosted two events last year under the Breath Project sort of name. Rhythm Adjust was the name of this auction that we held with the auction collective and we had I think 24 artists and maybe 36 works auctioned for Frontline 19 who were a charity who are a charity who are raising funds to offer free psychological support to frontline workers and that was an amazing project and very different mm. from being an artist in your studio and your practice the curating was different angle but one that felt very natural because I had this sort of vision and this idea for what it could be and we were happy to be able to take it to a physical exhibition in the autumn of 2021 as well where we brought about half of the artists from the auction to a, a physical show <laughs> which was then allowed <laughs> yeah. yes and I was there it was a very busy event and it looked like it was a great success yeah, no, it was it was fantastic to bring those artists together physically because that was really missing from the online auction, which is, well, we all we all wanted to see artwork, didn't we, during that time? <laughs> yeah. And how did it work with the auction collective? Well, we very much collaborated with them. They understood that the concept had come from us, and we were developing the curation of artists and our selection, and they understood that in this in this auction they could be the platform rather than the curators because normally their auctions are curated um, mm. by them but this was an amazing opportunity to again kind of pitch our idea to them and say this is what we want to do and and because there was obviously a, a really great community feel at that time everyone was volunteering to raise mm. money for for different charities that related to COVID and or the NHS or yeah they, they responded really positively and and they really loved our selection of artists and and kind of thought that the idea had legs. 
Yes, it was a really strong curation of a group of artists. It was a real cohesive theme running throughout them, but they were all different in their own right. How did you find those artists? Were they artists that you already knew? A real mix, actually, which was why it was so nice to work with Hannah on a curation, because she has a different reference point, Mm -hmm. a different community and network of of artists herself and so it was it was nice to kind of bring those together and almost to create that clash and tension of of different styles of artworks together even though the idea for the project probably had a kind of abstract undertone it was nice to be open to the ideas of different kinds of works that pulled into that theme Mm. I think with obviously the theme of breath we could have gone down quite a bodily route but that wasn't what we wanted to do for this show because I think that was very heavy in people's minds already yeah the idea of, of COVID and and all the negative associations with that so we wanted to do something a bit more abstract mm. a bit more about the 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 rhythm the rhythm of our lives that has been shifted and is adjusting to new rhythms and to look at motion process and and in, in 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 a sense kind of meditative elements which worked for some of the abstract artists and ideas of of nature and getting out into nature and having a yeah breathing real air <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find the experience of stepping into the role of the curator putting together the physical exhibition and also bringing in your own works sort of being on the other side i suppose i felt it quite natural really the auction was a large collection of work so it's certainly a challenge mm. when you're when you're pulling together that amount of information and the selection process is obviously takes a bit of time as well but as I mentioned before I love I love collaborating and so it mm. felt a really natural a natural place to be in to kind of share workloads and 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 support each other I think it's an incredible kind of way to work and something that I definitely need in my art practice. I'm, I'm not sure if it means I'm going to be curating lots in the future, but I certainly need to make projects happen with people. Mm. Need to make <laughs> creative projects anyway. Well, even on a sort of quite a straightforward way, you're sharing the studio with another artist. We're sitting here now, and we were just talking about that and how you've got your work on this side of the wall, um, and then she has her work here how do you find that experience of sharing your studio and coming in each day and seeing different work from her and you mentioned that your practice was even perhaps even influencing each other in some ways Mm. what's that like yeah I think it's it's really great because I think you can help each other if you get stuck with an idea or a composition or a or a colorway or you kind of bring each other different reference points and hey have you seen this artist's work you know oh you should go and see that show and also just kind of giving each other energy Mm. in in a way can be really useful sometimes um even if it's only checking in every now and then nothing like a mini crit with a cup of tea or seeing a whole series unfold again it can be that it can be that kind of support that you often need because you know being an artist can be a bit of a lonely job in in a way and I think community is really important within that and so having other artists around you that you can bounce off in loads of different ways is just so helpful and there seems to be similarities between your work so it seems to work well like her work doesn't jar with yours Um, it must be a nice space to come into yeah I think so and I think we both work with with a, a gestural painting practice in quite different ways, but that uh, there's probably a sense of flow within the space. But at the same time, sharing with another artist who who made work that would be quite different, I think would still be interesting and exciting to me because you have different kinds of dialogue, you know, and, and I think it can make you think in different ways if you're questioning each other's materials or practices or making different suggestions. And what's your day like as an artist when you come into the studio? Well, it can be quite varied depending on what's going on. I have a few other jobs, income mm. streams as well. So quite often my time in the studio will be quite specific. I often work in series and so I'll have a number of works 
on the go at once and quite often a similar color will flow between all of them so I'll put down certain gestures or kind of colors across works at the same time hoping that they then have the same color that flows through them (laughs) because often when you come back you don't get the color right and so so it's a real mix of making works quickly making works slowly and yeah kind of working across multiple projects at once I've often got a couple of different streams um, flowing at the same time Um, some of my work's more minimal some of my work is a bit more dynamic Mm -hmm. and energetic so it's quite difficult to find that balance but um, music definitely is important to my time in the studio I think that sense of flow Mm -hmm. that I know is always kind of part of the painting process is is important you settle into your your rhythms Mm. yes Um, you use the word rhythm a lot (laughs) (laughs) well look at the artwork yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I noticed on your website that you do have another section called branding and design which you put separately to your artwork Um, but looking at those projects I can see there's a real harmony and so there's themes coming into those projects because it's very much like Zani Mella has designed this. And how does that sit with your fine art practice? Yeah, well, it's it's been um, um, an interesting kind of um, process. But, I mean, a few years ago, I wasn't able to support myself just off my artwork. And so I've been working in kind of communication and design roles alongside my art practice, which has been a good way to to keep yourself fed and watered. But also, actually, over time, I've realised that as well as a visual communicator, working in painting and image making, I I really enjoy writing and I'm really good with working with people. And so, yeah, at the moment, I'm kind of working across graphic design projects, web design projects, some copywriting for different clients alongside my art practice. And... I like that energy and tension Mm. that doing those few things, what that brings to me. And Mm. I think you've, you've got to go with, with your skill set, right? Um, and so I'm, I'm very much doing kind of both of those things at the moment, which is really nice because it kind of creates a bit of a break, you know, from working visually and then coming back in and having that energy to, Mm. to paint and to, to push forward a few different ideas visually. A good example of that is the Breath Project because I could see that you'd put together the identity of the whole initiative. Yeah. And so there was a, it, there was a real harmony between that and then the actual works. and It just flowed all the way through, which works really nicely. And oh, thank you. I think people sort of expect that now as well. They're looking for that strong identity. In, uh, there's just branding is so strong now. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting because I think I mean, I started out doing illustration, but I was a fine artist as well. Mm. But then I've always had, and I think you can see that in the works, I've always had a kind of, probably a little bit of a design influence Mm. or there's been a a graphic language that's always run through my painting. So it's interesting now that I've moved across a whole spectrum of fine art, photography, design, and that those all seem to flow quite well alongside mm-hmm. each other I really enjoy that variation mm-hmm. and it's it's definitely kind of allowed me to realize okay like yeah it's it's all about communication <laughs> whether that's visual or non-visual but I think you do have a strong voice throughout those projects it doesn't feel random I think sometimes we see artists that they're going in so many different directions and don't really get a sense of what they're trying to do mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. whenever I look at your projects Whatever you're doing, I feel as though there's quite a set, strong sense of what you're trying to say or achieve or however you describe it. Um, and I'm looking at these pictures of your sculpture, photography collaboration, yeah. another artist. And again, that was quite a departure, but it still feels very much at one with everything else in this room, all these other artworks and pictures of artworks. Yeah. And I think that, that shows the, the strength of you as an artist because other artists just don't really have haven't really achieved haven't really reached that okay and it's hard I think it's a it's a hard one to reach I guess you've just spent a long time exploring and finding what you're trying to do yeah 
And I suppose if you need to support yourself in other ways, I think what you do can be very interesting because a lot of artists teach, mm. which I think is a, a really highly collaborative way of sharing ideas. And that's always kind of also been in the background of something that I might do in the future. The idea of sharing creative energy and helping other people develop it is actually something I'm really interested in. And I don't know if the Breath Project might go down that line. We're, we're, um, we're keep, keeping quite open at the moment in terms yeah. of what a future project might be. But I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> I don't know. Well, there's a lot to look at in this room. I think you, it's quite inspiring, but it also takes a conversation in lots of different directions. Yeah. Well, and then when you've got multiple avenues of creativity kind of coming out of you, it's, mm. you know, that's, that's how I roll. <laughs> well, tell me about, um, lastly, uh, just before we finish, tell me about your new pieces, because these are, I know we started with that, mm. but we haven't really talked about them, but I'm looking at them now, and they are quite different from some of your other works. So it's exciting to see this. Well, well, yeah, if you could describe them and tell me about what, how you're feeling about them. During the first lockdown and that period of kind of painting on the kitchen table, the paintings and collages definitely became a source of... There was, there was something I really needed to do. It, I guess it was that... that that pent up energy of maybe being inside during that time and, and that sense of kind of just needing to do what you do. And it came out in color in quite kind of exciting, vibrant colors, mm. which has been a real departure from the earlier works, which were much calmer and a bit more monochrome. And the only way that I've been able to make sense of that is that I think that the collage and paintings, the energy in them and the colours in them were were the kind of conversations and fun and parties that you have with friends, that energy that you give to other people in your daily life, those collaborations that you have all came out in the artwork. That's the only way I've been able to <laughs> interpret them because it's yeah, it's so much more colourful than before. But in in a way, it's very similar to what I have been doing in that there's there's gesture and there's energy, but it's also controlled and it's it's composed. There's um there's a sort of a calmness and an energy to them. There's the tension, Definitely. and the collages have been really interesting because I actually find the collages quite difficult to make because painting is 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 fluid, and I'm used to painting and collage the elements that I've been using are all are all textures that I've collected in the studio over the years they're they're little tests of gestures and and layers and whatever and it's a very different thing to cut into one of your older artworks and to reuse it for the, for the collage and so it's 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 less fluid for me it's a bit more of a compositional mm -hmm activity yes. um but that said I love the kind of energy that that they're creating and I've started to think of them as ways of giving energy to to someone that 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 has bought it bought one of the works and I took part in the artist support pledge during the lockdowns and and that was actually a really nice way of kind of giving away this creativity mm -hmm. to people and knowing that it was going to make their house all the brighter and it's interesting that it sort of slightly shifted my perspective of I really enjoy you know someone that someone's going to enjoy this work on mm. their wall and and it's kind of it's shifted that dynamic a little bit did I see that you are working you're showcasing your work with glassette yeah online yeah and are these the sorts of works that you're you're showing these yeah. more colorful pieces yeah how did that come about that seems like a really exciting opportunity yeah, it's it's quite a it's quite a different opportunity. It's really nice to see the works in a home. There's definitely been I mean, well, we all spend too much time on Instagram, but there's definitely been a sense of people sh shooting their artworks more and more in context of like yes. where they where yeah. they might be seen in someone's house. And interestingly, I also used to work for an interior architect, and so perhaps that that kind of industry has, has been well has been of interest to me as well and so 
I actually quite like the association of these artworks being on a platform that is maybe more seen as homewares. But I think that normalises the, the artwork because I think sometimes a white cube gallery experience can feel... It's a different kind of viewing experience, isn't it, to seeing a work in a home. And so, yeah, I think it's an interesting partnership to show your works in that context. Your larger monochrome big gestural pieces work so well in the white wall gallery mm. space but then as you say there's been this real move to showing work in the home and people really living with work which mm. I think is really exciting because it doesn't even doesn't have to be really sort of bland work it can be quite exciting work and it can be within the home environment yeah um, so yes yeah, so it's exciting you've got these t- there's two directions yeah. and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that goes and where you take these collages and this colourful, these colourful works. Yeah, I want to take them big. <laughs> yeah, I think they would work well really big. They've been quite a kind of intimate size mm. so far and I think that's because of the lockdowns and, mm. and making like on the kitchen table and at that scale. But it's, it's made me realise that, okay, these are, these are great to have as my like smaller scale works but now it's time to now it's time to upscale. I'd like to cross-pollinate the collages with photography again, working with my husband, Ed Horder, and we might do a future collaboration on something collage, sculptural. It'd be cool to see yes. where that goes. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for having me in your studio. Before you go, what piece of advice would you give to an artist starting out? Or it doesn't Ooh. have to be the piece. I've got loads. Me. Yes. <laughs> I've got loads. I think about this quite a lot. I often really like helping other artists Mm. if you've had that conversation and they're at the beginning of their journey I mean definitely one is you've got to be courageous and you've got to be curious and you've got to take risks and you've got to take risks with 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 your artwork what you're making how you show it who you show it with you've got to you've got to try you've got to try everything out you know you can't you can't know unless you try and so yeah I think courage and it's very difficult but it's something you you grow right Mm. yes (laughs) Um, I think you can get better at being brave you know like stretch it like a muscle can't you the more you push yourself the more and it's all trial and error right I mean artwork making artwork is trial and error very much I think probably maybe in the earlier stages and, and the earlier years of, of when you're branching out into it. But I've definitely kind of come across a few sort of friends and artists recently who've come into art making at a later stage in their career, have done one career and then shifted back into a creative practice. And that's been really interesting because quite often they might be more established in their life, but not in their art practice. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think courage is is definitely like something to take hold of i think that's great advice thank you and i'm looking forward to seeing what what you do next thank Thank, you thank you sophie thank you for joining me this week please follow zanny at zanny mella and the podcast at the visible artist podcast i hope you have a wonderful week in the studio and i'll see you next friday